Hi everyone, this is DeFi Dad, and this is another Bankless tutorial. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how I use Zerion. So Zerion is an interface for tracking my DeFi assets and investments. And it really acts as like a portfolio tracker. However, because Zerion also aggregates all of these different assets and applications that I'm using, has now added the capability of me participating in those different applications. So I can do things like become a liquidity provider in Uniswap, or I can open up a loan with Maker, or I can open up a loan with Compound. So we're gonna kind of talk through all of that here. To get started, go to zerion.io and then click on app. The first thing I do to start using Zerion is I wanna connect my wallet and I can connect multiple wallets using MetaMask, Fortmatic, uh, any wallet that uses Wallet Connect, Coinbase Wallet, Portis, or you can use a ledger. However, the convenient thing is you can also just type it in. So I'm gonna type in defidad.eth. The cool thing about this is that if you have multiple addresses, you can just flip back and forth between them. And if you use the mobile app, they actually have uh, an aggregate view of all of the different wallets you have. So if let's say you have three different wallets uh, and it's worth 7,000, 2,000 and 1,000, it'll end up showing you in the iOS and Android app, it'll show you that you have a net total of uh, one, I'm sorry, $10,000. So I can see my net wealth here in terms of all the digital assets that I have on Ethereum uh, go up and down and up and down and hopefully up again. <laughs> so uh, you'll notice here's my, my net wealth in this wallet. And then over here on the right side, you can see a breakdown of some of the common savings mechanisms that I'm using, like a wrapped Bitcoin vault in Maker, I've got DAI that's been lent to uh, Compound through Instadap. You notice also below that, I've actually got a breakdown of what are my actual loans. So again, there was that Maker Vault with wrapped Bitcoin, uh, and then there is my Instadap uh, Compound lending. I, I mean, the, the takeaway here is the fact that this stuff would be a nightmare to keep track of. And uh, you know, as a fallback, if I go to Etherscan, I can always look up my address and they do a really great job of giving you a breakdown. But I like the fact that Zerion visualizes all of this and it makes it much more colorful and interesting to look at. Speaking of colorful and interesting, the history tab is where I track my transactions. And the reason I like to use it is just, it's prettier to look at than Etherscan. Uh, I get desktop notifications just by clicking up above and allowing those notifications. And so when I get those, just like a MetaMask transaction, I can click into it and it'll show me here uh, what exactly has happened. You know, like, did I pay a fee? Uh, you know, uh, what tokens did I receive or what tokens did I send? And I've even got the ability here to go back and search for let's say ETH transactions, or I could search for DAI transactions, or maybe I search for RDAI transactions. So I can search by asset or protocol, and that comes in really handy. To be honest, I don't know where else I can do that right now. Uh, I think there's a chance Zapperfy does that, but otherwise this is a pretty unique feature that, that I use. Uh, the other thing is you can use this actually to help calculate taxes. Uh, they have uh, a partnership with Token Tax, and so uh, Token Tax will end up uploading all of your transactions, but you can check it out here to learn more about that. Next up is the Explore tab. This is where I can learn about new yield farming opportunities. I've got uh, some of the top liquidity pools. Um, I can also just look at uh, the top tokens by market cap or even some of the top performing sets. So if you're unfamiliar with sets, this is tokensets.com. You can learn more about it there. Those are tokens that give you exposure to trading strategies. Next up, we have this new market tab. 
Uh, it's really just a way to look at market cap versus the change in price over one day, 30 days, and 90 days. So just a convenient sort of tool that sits in your dashboard because the goal of Zerion is to keep you using this dashboard daily. You know, this is a tab that I never close. Um, so I'm able to rely on this because it keeps track of my wealth. It keeps track of my new transactions. It keeps track of market data that I need to track. Uh, there's just so much here. And, and so anyways, that's enabled me to depend on this daily. Under the Save tab, you'll find the nine different markets that are available in Compound. So this allows you to use the Zerion dashboard to lend any of these nine assets to the Compound protocol. And you'll notice that it gives you the rate here. So I could be earning 1.6% on DAI. I could be earning 3.23% on Tether. These rates are changing and updating constantly. So that's another sort of convenient thing I have available here. Uh, if I wanted to lend to one of these, just click on that market and you'll click through two different transactions. The first one is to approve permission for my wallet to actually spend DAI. The second one is where I actually deposit the DAI into the compound protocol. This is the exchange on Zerion, which is where I can trade uh, tokens. So I might have Ether and I wanna sell it for DAI. And so if I sell one Ether, I'm gonna get 319 DAI. That is facilitated by 0x, which is uh, where the liquidity comes from or just uh, where I'm able to source that trade from. And then they're just facilitating it. Uh, so I would hit exchange here. And once I do that, I'll get prompted now on my MetaMask. So there we go. So I would just confirm this if I wanted to do this trade right now. Because at the end of the day, Zerion is a dashboard and it's a facilitator or an aggregator of all of these different DeFi applications. Then we have liquidity pools. This is where I can become a liquidity provider in Uniswap or Bancor. And they've ranked these according to total liquidity. So you can see which of these pools is uh, uh, the largest in terms of total value. Because if I want to become a liquidity provider in the USDC ETH pool, I can click add liquidity. And then I could say, let's add one ETH, and then I'm going to need 322 USDC because this is a 50-50 liquidity pool, which means I have to add equivalent amounts of Ether and USDC. And then folks on Uniswap will trade back and forth between that while I own a portion of the pool, but then I'll be earning the trading fees or a fraction of the trading fees. If you're unfamiliar with liquidity pools, I would recommend going to pools.fyi, that's P-O-O-L-S dot F-Y-I. It'll explain more about what it means to be a liquidity provider and why people are willing to put their assets into a pool and earn trading fees, but also what is the risk of being a liquidity provider, which is commonly referred to as impermanent loss. Lastly, we have the borrow feature. This is where I can open up a loan. And in DeFi, loans are over collateralized. So I could open up a loan with Maker, like the one I have here, where I have collateralized 0 0.014 wrapped Bitcoin. And then I've borrowed uh, 45.146 DAI. On the other side of that, I've got Compound. Uh, Compound is another place that I could take out a loan. And currently I have 1.019 die, but I don't have a loan open with them. If I want to open up a new loan, I can check out what are the rates. I'm currently going to pay 0% APR, which these are variable rates. So just be aware these rates can change with uh, a governance vote in the future through Maker. Uh, and with Compound, that rate is actually dictated by how utilized the pool is. But if I wanted to borrow uh, with Maker, Let's pretend I wanted to borrow uh, 100 DAI and my collateral that I'm going to deposit and lock up while I take out that loan is Ether. It's saying that my estimated collateral required, 
without some other detail that we're going to need would be 0.557 ETH. So if I were to go borrow that, you'll see here that borrowing 100 DAI is going to put me in what's deemed a risky position, uh, just because if the price of Ether falls, uh, I could get liquidated. So what I might do here then is say, I'm going to borrow 50 DAI. Now I'm only borrowing 41% of the credit available to me. And so I'm putting myself less at risk of being liquidated. My liquidation price here would be 136.92. So this is, this is how low the price of Ether has to go before my collateral would be liquidated and I'd be risking a, a significant loss there. And then in order to open this up, uh, you can see what the fee would be here. Where risk comes in is if I use one of these different applications, I am using a DeFi application or protocol. And so this is compound under the save function. Under the exchange function I'm, uh, or trading, I'm using multiple protocols like 0x and Uniswap. Uh, under the pools tab, I'm using uh, Uniswap and Bancor. And then under the borrowing tab, I'm getting exposure through Compound and through Maker. Each one of these uh, is a separate protocol that comes with its own smart contract risk. So if I were to, let's say, open up a vault through Maker, I would consider going to nexusmutual.io and buying smart contract cover or insurance uh, to protect me from a smart contract bug so that I would get, get a payout if there were a bug discovered. Another thing to consider is just having exposure to stable coins. Let me see if, here we go. So we've got some USDC here. So there's uh, always risk of a stable coin depegging or just it failing holding to $1. Another thing with USDC or some of the other stable coins is uh, they can have a centralized risk to them. So there is some pause function, I believe, that is available through USDC. So that's something else that I think about. All right, that's all I've got for you today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach us in the Bankless Discord group if you're a Bankless member, or you can comment on this YouTube video. And if you want to learn more about Zerion and try it out yourself, go to zerion.io and click on the little button up in the top right that says app.